Bagel Station, happy second week of March. Welcome to the bull market. Um, have, have we you, welcomed said, them you've enough said, times? You've said, you've said that too many times. You said that Look, too many times. I, I don't think we can say that too many times, <laughs> David, because uh, people are excited about this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it needs to be celebrated every single week of the bull market because we got to oh, enjoy God, these times, David. We don't know how long they're going to last. That's how you burn out in a bull market. Uh, speaking of which, did you know, David, Bitcoin hit all-time highs this week for like three seconds? It glanced it at best. <laughs> It's a glancing blow. Are we going to have the, the, the debate about this right is, now? Is still preserved. We have not crossed all time highs. Okay, so um, I thought that we did cross all time did. highs yeah. because I actually don't know what all time highs are yeah. for Bitcoin. Six, uh, Sixty nine thousand something. I recall that much. And yeah. then everyone was saying we hit all time highs. Well, no, because of all of the Twitter this. influencers want to have the banger tweet that goes <laughs> off and gets 10,000 well, likes. Well, that's why I did it. Yeah, but like we touched all time highs maybe like touched on, it. on Kraken it was 69,100 and something. In my mind, all time highs is 69420, but really we're not going to like confidently be above all time highs until like Probably seventy thousand. I wasn't saying we were confidently. I'm I'm wondering. I'm asking the question whether it technically counts because if it's above the last all time high, then it technically counts. And I will. It concede, technically counts, but it's cringe to celebrate. No, it's not. If it technically counts, then we did. <laughs> no, then we did. No, no. We, like, we are in not in spirit. We have not crossed all time. Highs. But you're saying it doesn't technically count. You're you're saying it wasn't actually technically hit. And I'm trying to find the truth of that on, yeah. on like what chart. What's the canonical all-time high number? There, there is none. Well, because like Kraken has their number, uh, Coinbase has its number, like Binance has its number. Okay. And the David Hoffman, no. uh, definition. and the David Hoffman number, which is the canonical version. You just okay. You pick the <laughs> highest one. You pick is the highest one. Sixty-nine four twenty. Okay. Which we did so, not touch. So according to David, we did not hit all-time high. Yeah. According to Ryan, we did. For three seconds. People in my Twitter DMs all agree that it's a mulligan, David, it's a do-over, we did not cross all-time highs. That's your Twitter followers. Of course they agree with you. That's like My Twitter followers are media the best is a followers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll let the Bankless Nation decide whether we hit all-time high Those or Those are my not. Twitter but followers. honestly, I'm fine. I'm fine Doing waiting it for again. another week, <laughs> another two weeks, because I can start this episode again by saying welcome to the, the bull market. And, At the beginning uh, of last week... Wild. I think it was actually the day before this happened. It was like Wednesday or something. Uh, and I think it was like yeah, you, Josh, a few other people were all in a bankless call together. And, and we're like, oh, yeah, we're hitting all-time highs tomorrow. And I'm like, we're not hitting all – like it, we were at $67,500. Yeah. And you guys were yeah. like, yeah, we're hitting all-time highs tomorrow. I'm like, guys, we're it's not. It's going to be next week. Like it's not happening this week. So wait, but but to me, that's more evidence that we actually hit all time high, and you're you're in denial, maybe David, because you've you've already called it, you've already implanted this <laughs> in your psychology that we're not hitting it to next week. Maybe we actually hit it. We did not hit it. Or is this is this part of your is this part of your plan to to do the quiet um, to quiet calm people down? Thing? Yeah, yeah. It would be better for the industry if we were hitting it later. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's one thing we're going to talk about a little bit. This all-time high question. Uh, what else, David? We got some records that broke as well. The spot ETFs broke another record. We talk about that. And also, I want to talk to you about the Ethereum ETF because some people are saying that we are a little too excited about, about, the, about ETF the ETF and we yeah. should cool our jets a little bit. What else we got? Wormhole announcing their airdrop. Who is eligible? We got a summary for all the details, but we're going to need more details out of Wormhole in the future. We'll talk about that. Uh, Eigenlayer surpassed $10 billion. Yowzer. Uh, and the, also the SEC is going after Shapeshift. Commissioner Hester Peirce drops a screenplay and eight <laughs> United States so state great. attorney generals call the SEC a regulatory power grab. So ah. The SEC drama does not continue. Before we get into all of those details, we got a message for you from our friends and sponsors over at Cartesi. If you don't know what Cartesi is, it is a modular execution layer that runs Linux. So if you want a chain, an app chain, that runs Linux as the virtual machine, an alt virtual machine. Uh, Cartesi is a place for you. It's a place where you can build dApps that leverage you know, all the traditional open source library and tooling that exists in the Linux space. Linux, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, and so there is a $1 million ecosystem grant from Cartesi that is now live. And they want to give you some of that money. They want to give you money. Uh, so you can apply for that money with a link in the show notes, bankless.cc slash Cartesi, C-A-R-T-E-S-I. 
the world runs on uh, Linux. Why, why shouldn't our blockchains, mm-hmm. I guess, David? Mm-hmm. Huh? That's, uh, <laughs> that's where we're going. Uh, let's talk about Bitcoin price right now. Now, I will agree <laughs> with you. We are not at all-time high at the time yeah, of currently recording. recording yeah <laughs> what do we add on the week david okay we started the week at sixty two thousand three hundred dollars up five thousand four hundred dollars on the week eight point five percent we are currently at sixty seven thousand eight hundred dollars can we talk about this this big red candle down yeah like what? how we got one billion dollars of people getting liquidated <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is up with this? By the way, we're, we're looking at these glorious prices mm-hmm. on the, the Kraken Pro charts, which is a fantastic place to go buy your crypto assets this cycle. Uh, but we, okay, he, here's where some people called the all-time high right here. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then just after that, we it just dumped. tanked. Like, like it was the double such, digit. Such, such obvious price action. Double digit candle down. What happened? Why did that happen? Uh, because a bunch of DGENs levered up. And too many of them all joined on the same trade. And then it was too frothy, too quickly. And then everyone got liquidated. Uh, And then the crazy thing is we spiked right back up. (laughs) (laughs) So we went right back up to like $68,000. I mean, leverage is a rite of passage. Leverage is a part of the bull market. Uh, So like when I say DGENs, I don't mean it like uh, in a derogatory fashion. It's just... I only mean it when there's too many of them. Like, we can't all be DGENs. You only mean it when we, it becomes a problem. <laughs> we, yeah, exactly. We all, we all need to take healthy turns being DGENs. Slow down. Yeah, don't slow celebrate down. your all-time slow highs down. before they yeah, happen. Yeah. Right? Don't, don't take leverage right before all-time <laughs> highs. Like, come on. Uh, it was funny. The, the fact that we spiked right back up is like one of the most bullish like price actions I've ever seen. Like a bunch of DGENs gets like, liquidated and then we just resume like right where resume we left ascent off. yeah uh, uh-huh. you know so, some people are actually panicking about this and uh you know like i saw some uh, tweets joking oh bear market's over pack it in boys that was it right. we that was it. High. that's <laughs> it see, see in 2028 um this is dc investor echoing your sentiments look i'm no expert but when something suddenly retraces 15 percent and then sets a new cycle high the next day it's pretty effing bullish new cycle high these are the words <laughs> that you need to be using <laughs> DC said it well. All right. Good job, DC. Um, Also, David, did you know this? All right. So here's something I I will say that I am actually knowledgeable about with respect to um, Mm -hmm. Bitcoin all-time high is the real all-time high, at least in fiat terms, inflation adjusted is actually not 69,000 Bitcoin, 69,420 or whatever your number is. The real time uh, all-time high when you adjust for inflation is actually 77K Bitcoin. Okay, because so we've a, had a whole lot of inflation right. since the last time Bitcoin hit all-time high. So I think what that means is we can uh, celebrate it twice. Dude, your all time high metrics are weird. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's basically one November of 2021 Bitcoin was worth $77,000 yeah. in today's dollars. Yeah, look at the buying power. Right, okay. Oh, so I, so we have I got the numbers to back it up. highs at 69,420, yep. and then we have real purchasing power all time highs at $77,000. Yeah. One of the crazy things uh, that happened, I, I put out a tweet that was um, the last two weeks are going to go down in like one of the most bullish two weeks in, in crypto history, simply straight due to price action. The February 2024 Bitcoin candle was the largest monthly candle in Bitcoin history, going really? from like $4,250 this up is to right? $61,000. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's just that's, take a that's look just, at that. That's, a good, that's impressive. And the thing is, is like, that's now the floor. Like, mm-hmm. we're going to have, if, you know, bull markets repeat themselves, which they do, uh, that we're going to have at least a few more of those. A uh, few more best, like, Februarys or best months, you mean? A few more biggest candles ever. Yeah. And so, like, what, how big is that candle? 42 to 61. So, almost a $20,000 candle. We get, I'm, I'm calling it, we get at least two more $20,000 candles in Bitcoin this cycle. So just to uh, put some numbers on the uncharted territory that we're, we're in right now, even if we're not uh, at all-time high, we're real close. We are, we are not crossing all-time highs. We are in price discovery. Yes. Uh, Bitcoin has only spent five days above the current uh, price. And right. the current price at the time of this tweet was about um, 65K. Mm-hmm. So this is pretty close to right. alt, like um, uncharted territory, right. price discovery what? phase. We're, we're in uncharted territory territory i would say yeah uh 
David, the reason for this, it feels like, is once again, the Bitcoin ETFs, yeah. because we got another be. record on this. What are we looking at? Uh, B Bitcoin ETFs are registered the largest net inflows since day one. So new record. So that is the new all time high, Ryan. You can celebrate that all time high. I will allow you. <laughs> I will allow you that one. Uh, you're so Six, generous. Six hundred and forty eight million dollars in one day. That's net inflows. Six hundred forty eight million dollars came into the Bitcoin ETFs. All of them, that, right? We're not just all, talking about collect, one. collectively just all of them. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so like that's just like we're just Bitcoin has. 640 50 million dollars of daily buying pressure i mean that's an all-time high record but like we keep breaking all-time highs in daily buying pressure from tradfi uh they're all-time high tell me blackrock uh yep. etf just hit 10 billion and that well, is that's up only has it ever high. lost any bitcoin <laughs> it's up I think, only i think it's been all-time high just about every week yeah. we've recorded yeah, yeah. actually uh, -huh. uh that's a that's a um uh, impressive amount Mm -hmm. of Bitcoin and, yeah. and value. Um, Eric Balchunas says that this is a, a milestone. He said the 10 Bitcoin ETFs did 10 billion in volume. Now he's talking about volume, smashing previous record set last Wednesday. Volatility and volume go hand in hand with ETFs, so not totally surprised. That said, these are bananas numbers for ETFs mm -hmm. under two months old. Under two months old. It's a newborn. Right. Yeah. ETFs are new, brand new. So uh, we can talk about another flippening. Usually we talk about ETH flippening Bitcoin, but that's not looking like it's happening anytime soon, not with this <laughs> kind of price action. But the thing that is probably going to happen, hopefully, if you're a crypto bull, uh, gold being flipped by Bitcoin, the gold ETF, in the lead with $92 billion in the gold uh, ETFs. Uh, where are we at with the Bitcoin ETFs and the, the total AUM in, in Bitcoin it's ETFs? about half that, David. Half it's that? About, yep, half wow. that. So we're at okay. like 40, 45 that's uh, getting close nuts. to 50 that is and all we nuts. have to do is double the price of bitcoin and we like and then we're above right. gold <laughs> dude gold is getting flipped so soon not only are we going to double the amount of bitcoins in the etfs over yeah. this coming year bitcoin price is also doubling yeah you're exactly it's, it's, it seems like a lot gold. if you're like oh we have to get you know d like double the amount of buying no you don't you just have no. to get a little bit more yeah. you know buying and then price just needs to go up and it yeah. has been going up yeah i mean think about it though like who do you know anyone your age? I mean, maybe this is an unfair question because your your social network, I'm sure, is so plugged into yes. crypto. But like, <laughs> I have zero so maybe this is friends. a terrible data point. But just, <laughs> I just, I can't imagine being like a Who millennial, the F, Gen is Z, buying gold, and you're just like, you know what, I'm bullish on. You gold. know, a story. It's just gold. Give me the all that The only reason why you would be bu a bullish gold over Bitcoin is if you think the internet is going to have structural problems. If the internet has structural problems, we, we have, have structural problems. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a that's a um, at this point. I mean, we are so plugged in. Like uh -huh. electrical grid goes down, internet goes down. What are you going to do with your freaking gold? I'd rather have right. like weapons than that right. than yes. gold at that yes, point. Buy time. guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, that's a little update for you. And uh, our friends over at Wells Fargo, David, do you know they're getting they're, in on this Bitcoin they're action? They're the best people Merrill Lynch, over there. Wells Fargo. Um, my personal bank, by the way. I've yep. banked at Wells Fargo yep. since, yep. like, mm -hmm. I was a kid. Yep. It was my yep. first bank. Like, it, it was my first bank. Really? And it <laughs> yeah, still is. It's funny how, you, like, I just haven't changed banks. It's I, always been my... Why would I do that? <laughs> I, I just use know. it a lot they're, less They're now. all equally shit. <laughs> I, I use it a lot less because I am banking less. You know, yeah. bank less. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about ETH. Enough, of, enough about Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Wait, did you did you say why we're talking about uh, Wells Fargo? I think I did. They oh, they're they're approving multiple Bitcoin ETFs. Yes. So yes, Merrill Lynch, you... Wells Fargo approving multiple Bitcoin ETFs in their wealth management clients. Yeah, which have trillions of dollars in assets, and these are just some of the many banks that are going to be doing this. Yeah, because banks have wealth managers on staff. Yep. Do you know they'll yep. uh, they'll give you a call and they'll just be mm -hmm. like, hey, can we help you invest your money? I see you have a lot of money in your savings account or your checking right. account. And they'll be like, can we help you? They don't, they don't call. They don't, I don't get those calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, uh, maybe I'll send some uh, Wells Fargo wealth ma managers your way, give you some advice, David. Um, what are we at on the ETH price this week? ETH price, extremely healthy performance this week. The ETH chart is just a straight linear line. <laughs> this, this is so weird to see. It Look is at this. the straightest, most linear line I have looks ever seen. Looks artificial. Yeah, it looks this is being manipulated. artificial. Yeah, can you can you hit the one day candles? We're looking at four hour candles. Goes back yeah. from it goes back one month. Hit one day candles. How long is that a line for? My That's God. Beautiful. It That's is a line from October. The, the traders call that the stairway to heaven. 
That well, that is climbing a wall of worry. That's what that looks like <laughs> to me. Yeah. Okay. From October until February, we were at one degree, one y equals mx plus b line degree, uh, oh, and now good algebra. Yeah, you, like, you like that one? Uh, yeah. From February, we're on a much more vertical line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The we started. We started the week three thousand eight hundred sixty-three dollars. Uh, excuse me. We started the week three thousand four hundred thirty dollars, up four hundred twenty dollars. Nice uh, to three thousand eight hundred sixty-three dollars, up twelve percent. So another ETH double actually, digit. Uh, ETH actually gained four percent versus Bitcoin on the week, even when Bitcoin had a hundred million dollars of inflows just yesterday. Wow. wow. Okay. Wow. Is this a quote unquote alt season? I I don't consider uh, ETH if you an go alt, look the down way, the market cap stack, it is absolutely all, all season. Mm. Have you seen the absolute shit coins that crypto Twitter is peddling I don't right know now? What that is that alt season? That's something. That's narrative That's season for sure. Whatever the oh, the, what I, are the you're kind of off of Twitter. Is. You haven't even seen some of the degenerate <laughs> like uh, 2024 election tokens that are like pumping right now. I've heard about them. I yeah. saw Coin Gecko added a category called political. And yeah, it's political just, meme coins it's like Trump coin, and there's like four or five others. And I was there, like, "That's an area I'm not even touching." I don't even know how to pronounce it. Like the Biden one is like Job Bowden or something <laughs> like this, and like Trump has equally like misspelled and odd and weird. They're on Solana, and this is Solana is actually having a, a fantastic price action week this week too. Um, did, did you hear? Uh, did you read Travis Kling's uh, tweets? He's just like the reason for this is a financial nihilism. That's a Dimitri oh. Kofinas take too. One hundred percent is financial yeah. nihilism. Meme I, coins uh, are the most financially nihilist like financial assets I can imagine, which is yeah, why they have so much product market fit with crypto. The comment is basically because millennials, like specifically younger millennials and and Gen Z, can't afford houses, and so what do they do? They just gamble it uh, because it is they're... funny. It is funny, <laughs> and I will say like this: when you give it's GameStop, it's GameStop you, stuff. When you give the people the power to produce financial assets permissionlessly. Like what did what's the first thing that we did on the internet? Cat pictures. Now we have dog coins, but now people are like, "Hey, I can make uh, a meme coin about anything." Um, Jacob from Zora had a really good tweet that I liked, which is he said, "In the future, meme coins will just be memes. This is just there's just memes, but now they just have a chart with them, and you can make or lose money on them." <laughs> <laughs> Buyer beware is all I gotta yeah, say, but yeah. uh, it is kind of entertaining. Um, let's put the ETH number in perspective compared to Bitcoin. So last kind. Ki- time bitcoin was trading at this level so mm-hmm. you know 65k and above eth was trading at 4878 there's a lesson in there says croissant dot right. eth what do you think the lesson is the lesson is that this is just where we are in the market cycle first bitcoin pumps then eth pumps and everything else pumps so we're implying eth has some catch up to do and it will do that catch up well it, ha- it ca- caught up by four percent this week um as we approach the ETH ETF, which despite what some of the content further on in this weekly rollup will say, is definitely coming. Let's get to that uh, content. Yeah. Why, why spoil it? Okay, so the the big question mark, I think, the, the thing that would send, I expect, ETH uh, to beyond all-time highs, I don't know, to the moon, to somewhere else, to somewhere yeah. we haven't seen before. The giga moon. The giga moon, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Ethereum <laughs> ETF, all right? So the question uh-huh. is, When's it coming? The two people I know who probably know the best, have the best estimates on this, mm-hmm. are Eric Balchunas and uh-huh. James Seyfert. And um, by the way, we have invited them on the podcast. They're gonna they're putting out new estimates. When they do, we're going to have them on the podcast and, and give you the download. But th- the tweet I have on the screen is a quote tweet uh, quoting Jake Travinsky. Jake Travinsky uh, says, I am a lot less confident about ETH ETF approval this year than many of you are. The reason... The SEC got a ton of political blowback for approving Bitcoin ETFs, even though the court basically forced it to. Now, animal spirits are in control of the market, and an ETH ETF would only add to that. So the the comment is basically Gary Gensler took it, you know, politically to the gut because he approved this. The anti-crypto army did did not like this. uh, Like in some circles, uh, not not in our circles. Okay. In right. some circles. Maybe Jake it, knows more about this. I do not see the political blowback for approving the Bitcoin ETFs. I think like Elizabeth Warren made some comments, a few other people made some comments, but like but, I didn't see any of that. But that's Gary's circle. That's Gary's network. You know how we were talking about in your network, you probably don't know anyone who would buy gold. In Gary's network, I mean, things are a lot different okay. with the, the people Gary Fair. hangs out with and the people that, uh, that put Gary in power, right? So um, that's Jake's. And it, like, 
so political punch to the gut for, for Gary is not going to do it. And now that the market is pumping, the SEC probably doesn't want to add to this. And let's recall. Is that a reason for denying or, or delaying? None ETF of it's just been because, a valid like, reason. It's however Gary feels. Because remember, he's the, th- he's the third vote. But it's not however Gary feels. It's who's going to sue him if he's being arbitrary and capricious. True, true. And that's kind of maybe the counter to this, right? Yes. Is, is somebody's going to sue him, it forced his hand the same way they yeah. forced uh, the hand of Bitcoin. But I, I don't know. I mean... I think, I think he's got one shot of delaying it in May. And then he basically has to approve it by November, which is the latest deadline uh, before shit really hits the fan, before the SEC gets sued. Like, it's the same logic as the Bitcoin ETF. So there's two layers to this about our general excitement about the Ethereum ETF, right, is Mm -hmm. the question of will it happen? Yes, no. And that's some, you know, probability. And by the way, Eric Balchunas and James Seyfert said that Last time they put estimates out, it was greater than 50% that it would happen right. in 2024. I don't know what the was, revised estimates 60, are. The last numbers I heard was 60% in May, 95, 90 plus percent by November. Sure. Okay. So that's layer, but that's layer one of the analysis, David, because layer right. two is when it comes out, will it matter? Right. It mattered in a massive way for Bitcoin, obviously. The inflows mm-hmm. were beyond what anyone expected. But right. why? Does that necessarily apply to Ethereum? And uh, oh, for you and I, we get like, the same inflows that yeah. everyone else. Yeah. Eric mm-hmm. Balchunas again. Uh, uh, he says this is like he's talking about the Ethereum ETF. If it happens, it's like the opening act coming on after the headliner using Gen Z bands. It's like Sister Hazel trying to follow Nir- Nirvana. So it's basically like uh, you know the opener it's, act. We already had the kind of the Bitcoin right. is the rock star. Right. So right. and and he justifies that. By basically saying, like, look at um, ETH futures. ETH futures are are paltry right now in terms of of demand, and so he's saying it like it, it might not matter. It'd just be like a, like a fart in the wind. No one cares about this. Okay, the comparison of Bitcoin futures to ETH futures, I think, makes sense. Uh, but it would have to be Bitcoin futures pre Bitcoin ETF. Um, that's but a that b that's not what Sandy Call said. Sandy Call said is that. The ETH ETF is going to be interesting to investors because it is a tech platform play, and that is what people like. Uh, ETH is a little bit more hard to understand. It has like dollar cost flows, which like Wall Street needs to like wrap their head around. Um, but also at the same time, ETH has one third the market cap of Bitcoin. So like maybe we have one third of the demand that Bitcoin has, but we have three times the sensitivity to price movements that Bitcoin does because we're one third we as Ethereum, <laughs> are one-third the size. I just think for this part of the analysis, though, this is Belchunas's take, and he does have a data point, which is um, ETH futures. And Future like, fair sure. enough, they, okay. they have it. Like, so I, I kind of factor that okay. in. However, I will say, I think that um, people who are bullish Ethereum are going to be bullish demand for the Ethereum ETF. And if you're not bullish Certainly. Ethereum, you're more yeah. bullish Bitcoin, then you're kind of like bullish uh, Bitcoin ETF. I remember right. when um, the Bitcoin ETF launched, a lot of people said there will be no demand. And right. these are generally people who are not like in the category of being bullish mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Bitcoin. So, you know, we'll have to see, I guess. But it's an interesting discussion. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't um, uh, dissuade me from being excited about this. Uh, I'll say that, but maybe give some some pause for thought. Uh, ETH Bitcoin ratio, David, what are we at on the week? Yeah, we're up on the week 0.0573 up on the week. How about the, the uh, crypto market cap? Oh, yeah, God, crypto is getting crazy. Uh, 2.6, $2.7 trillion. Uh, we are getting a lot amount of uh, price, uh, total crypto market cap increase because of the number of degenerate shit coins, excuse my language, uh, that are the long tail of crypto is getting a pump. From the fat tail, this is what this is the way that it always plays out. Bitcoin loads up its jet fuel, and with all of the ETF flows, and then people who w- want to go risk on get bumped out of Bitcoin, and they start looking down tail. And now we have like the here we'll talk about the movers of the week. Um, movers of the week, where are they? Pepe, Floki, Shiba Inu, Dog with Hat. Mm. Quality. If you were if you here. were in any of these, congratulations, mm. you had a fantastic week. Like also two hundred percent, triple digit up. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're excited about our double digit up with uh, Bitcoin yeah. and ETH, and this is triple digit up. Yeah. Right yeah. now. 138% on Shib, Shib Inu. 
Uh, I mean, the question is, is retail back? I think you got a clip that that you want to play us. But uh, before we get to that, let, let's talk about uh, Layer 2s as well, yep. which are majorly up on the week. And of course, yep. our Layer 2 update is always wow. brought to you by Mantle, which is a, a new and upcoming also up on Layer the week. 2 yeah. that we enjoy uh-huh. very much. Uh, so tell me about this. Look at this, David. That is a... Uh, Added like $8 billion, $7 billion in the last seven days. $37 billion total value locked in Layer 2s. We have a brand new Layer 2 blog. Blasting onto the scene, it's called Blast. <laughs> Number three roll up by TVL, two point seven five billion dollars on day one. Uh, you gotta like tip your hat to the player of the game, Pac Man. We're gonna get him on the show sometime soon. Um, what is so? You, this if, is interesting. If, the the reason I love watch, looking at uh, Blast on Layer Two B, mm-hmm. and it's almost a uh, three billion as well, is because it it shows you the stage, like the mm-hmm. the security stage and the decentralization. It is stage zero in the same way OP mainnet is. But the annotation on layer two beat is it's full training wheels and there's currently, there's no available right. node software that can reconstruct the state from L2 data, uh, L1 data. Hence, there is no way to verify that this system is a roll up. So not quite as uh, there's no strong. Ex- there's, there's no exit hatch. There's uh, no exit hatch, hatch that has yeah. been verified right now. So I mean, like the whole strategy with Blast was like, Go to market, get TVL. Go to market, get TVL. Get users, get projects. Go to market, get TVL. And they executed on that part of the roadmap. Like, like honestly, study it. It was immaculate. They put they got two point seven five billion dollars on day one. Insane. Did they cut corners though? Is it risky? One hundred percent. They okay. cut corners. They cut all <laughs> corners possible. That's why there's two point five seven billion dollars in there. Yeah. And there's it's a it's a fine line between wow that was really smart and like oh you guys like you yeah, just bad look bad and look, bad yeah look. bad look and so I don't know I mean as long as hey, they don't get hacked as long as nothing bad as happens. long as they don't lose anyone's money <laughs> as long as they don't lose any of that two point seven five billion dollars all right so blast now live also on the layer two side Arbitrum transactions are going nuts did I see yeah. something about this yeah so go and go to the activity tab okay. on layer twos because we, yeah. we we got some nice numbers here. Arbitrum Scaling Nova factor. is this yes the one? Arbitrum in Nova. You want to know why, Ryan? Yeah. I was uh, Arbitrum Nova is like the second Arbitrum chain. Extremely cheap fees. Uh, really putting in a new because it's a Validium, high. right? It's a like Validium. Yeah, off chain data. Yeah. Okay. So for, forty to fifty transactions per second sustained. These are real transactions. No vote transactions. No like blah 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 transactions. Real transactions. Who's forty doing to fifty this? per Who second. Is this? Over a million transactions. I think uh, in a very short amount of time. Uh, this it's this it's this brand new project which is a DPIN project on Arbitrum. DPIN stands for decentralized physical infrastructure network called Airbus. Uh, Air, Ar, excuse me, Arbus, Arbus, Arbus. Final answer, Arbus <laughs> AI. It's a DPIN project working on AI compute. It's an AI compute project. <laughs> okay. It's a goddamn AI project. Of course it of is. Of course it would be. Do you, do you think that? By the by the way, I um. I, I tweeted this out and I was just like, hey, I, I'm real like before I've been worried about how much block space we're creating, uh-huh. who's gonna buy it. And the comment that I added this morning was like, Oh, I see who's gonna buy it. It's the AIs, it's, it's the AIs. robots. It's gonna be AI. Do you yep. think that's real? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Bankless listeners didn't listen to our AI meme coin episode that came out earlier this week. That was so good. One hundred percent listen to that. Uh because I mean this is 2017 was the ICO mania, 2021 was the NFT mania, 2024 I uh AI frenzy. AI frenzy. Well, Let's get back to the frenzy. And uh, David, you have a clip that you wanted us yes. to see. Uh, and this, you set this me, up for yeah. us. I yeah, don't let me tee this up. At. Yeah, so like, this is, I bet you like less less than half of, of Bankless listeners will be kind of exposed to this. So just to let you know what's going on, this happened last cycle. This was also about to start happening this cycle. Uh, this is uh, retail. This is what retail looks like. Let's go ahead and watch this TikTok video from Mr. Retail. So y'all seen my video yesterday, right? No, this was at $100. It has gone up $67 in 24 hours. Actually, Shit. oh, hold on. Today's return, $64. Total return, 111 That's in four days. I, I invested in this four days ago, <laughs> and it's... Yes! Do not believe anybody. Everybody doubted Dogecoin and thought it wasn't going to amount to anything, and now look at it, almost 20 cent. Oh, this, this... 3.8 million. Get it. Get it now before it goes up more. It is constantly steadily Get going up. Now. Do not listen to these people saying it ain't going nowhere. It's going. It's happening now. $60 overnight. Thought y'all said it won't go and do nothing. So when he says it's up $67, he put $100 in to Coinbase bought $100 worth of SHIB. It's up $67 and he's stoked and he's telling all of his TikTok friends 
to also go buy SHIB. This Cannot is what go we're up down. against. Cannot go <laughs> this down. is what you know, we're up against. Here's the thing. I think for a lot of people, that guy sounds exactly like you and I, David, at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> and that is the problem. It's hard to differentiate. Yeah. It's yeah. really hard for people to differentiate. So that's why you got to hey, do may, Maybe we are the same, you know? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're no better. Oh, we just God. chill ETH and Bitcoin, but yeah. mostly ETH. We just like to virtue signal. That's all. That's yeah, the difference yeah, yeah. here. We like um, to sniff our own farts. A couple other milestones here. Uh, Tether, over $100 billion uh, now mm -hmm. in Tether. So we just had the uh, Tether CEO, Paulo, on the podcast. It was a great episode. I think we'll have uh, Jeremy Lair on as well. So go check out that episode, but pretty big milestone. And also this has started happening. So Coinbase is now breaking into the top 100 in the Apple App Store. And this is the first time since uh, early 2022. That yeah, this well, because happened. we have all these TikTokers telling people to go buy SHIB. They have to go re-download Coinbase. Oh, my God. Coin. There was a time where Coinbase would not be listing SHIB, but th those are the old days, uh, I guess. Actually, I don't I don't know if SHIB is on Coinbase, but it probably is. Hell, like a Coinbase wallet to me. Uh, David, what do we have coming up next? Coming up next, SEC sends a cease and desist to a crypto exchange shapeshift. Eric Voorhees does not blink. Meanwhile, Commissioner Hester Peirce wrote a screenplay about the utter absurdity of the matter. Big airdrop coming that Gary Gensler doesn't want you to have. The wormhole token is out, rewarding users across all these different chains. So we're going to get to all of this and more. But first, a moment to talk about some of these fantastic sponsors that make this show possible, especially Kraken. The exchange with 100% uptime this week. If you do not have an account with Kraken, consider clicking the link in the show notes <laughs> if you want an exchange that doesn't go down. Oh, wow. If you want a crypto trading experience backed by world-class security and award-winning support teams, then head over to Kraken, one of the longest-standing and most secure crypto platforms in the world. Kraken is on a journey to build a more accessible, inclusive, and fair financial system, making it simple and secure for everyone, everywhere, to trade crypto. Kraken's intuitive trading tools are designed to grow with you, empowering you to make your first or your hundredth trade in just a few clicks. And there's an award-winning client support team available 24-7 to help you along the way, along with a whole range of educational guides, articles, and videos. With products and features like Kraken Pro and Kraken NFT Marketplace and a seamless app to bring it all together, it's really the perfect place to get your complete crypto experience. So check out the simple, secure, and powerful way for everyone to trade crypto, whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned pro. Go to kraken.com slash bankless to see what crypto can be. Not investment advice, crypto trading, involves risk of loss. Uniswap is revolutionizing the DeFi space, not just by enabling swaps, but by empowering you to swap smarter with a comprehensive suite of products for faster, safer, and more informed swapping. Say goodbye to pop-up wallet extensions. The Uniswap extension is coming soon, and this extension is not a pop-up. It is a sidebar in your browser that persists no matter where you are on the web. This means you can swap, sign, or send, and receive crypto anytime, anywhere, without obstructing your browser window. But that's not all. The Uniswap web app now features limit orders, so you can buy buy and sell any token at your price on your terms without having to watch the market. And the best part, limit orders are built on Uniswap X, which means no gas fees. Also new to the web app is the data and insights pages with real-time candlestick charts, price data, transaction logs, and detailed pool data, all integrated into the Uniswap web app. All of these new releases come together to create one platform to help you swap smarter every time, no matter where you are, on web, mobile, or on the extension. Click the link in the show notes to sign up for the extension waitlist and download the mobile app. Start swapping smart with Uniswap. Are you launching a token? Is it already live? How are you managing the legal and tax obligations for providing token grants to your team? It's no secret that token management gets complicated. Between learning all the legal language and tax obligations in every country that your team is in, token grant management can feel like an obstacle course, but it doesn't have to. That's where Toku steps in. Toku provides practical tools to handle token grants, allowing for effective oversight of token distributions and payroll tax compliance for employees, contractors, advisors, and investors. They also handle handle tax withholdings through their real-time tax calculations that can be done by Toku or integrated into any payroll EOR providers in any jurisdiction. Toku is a trusted provider of Protocol Labs, DYDX Foundation, Mina Protocol, and many more. Get started for free and make token compensation simple at toku.com slash bankless. Uh, another week, David. More SEC shenanigans. Uh, a couple My things favorite. we need to get into. All right, so um, you know Shapeshift, which was Eric Voorhees' exchange. Um, mostly now a decentralized exchange, by the way, but there was a point in time where there was some counterparty risk with uh, Shapeshift. 
Anyway, the SEC filed a cease and desist against Shapeshift, basically cease and desist serving uh, U.S. customers. And uh, it alleged that Shapeshift was operating in 2021 as an unregistered dealer for cryptocurrencies that were securities. And they further said that they would accept a settlement offered by Shapeshift for a 275K fine. Uh, so A $275,000 extortion bribe. Yeah, basically. To go, to go away. Uh, good thing yeah. it's just, uh, it's in fiat, you know, so uh, it's uh, not not that much money. And th- this I mean, is pretty- One Bitcoin. So. Yeah, <laughs> this is pretty similar to the accusation that the SEC is, of course, brought against other exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, and, and Binance. It's it's all part of uh, the, the same campaign here. Here's a uh, comment from Eric Voorhees. What does he say? Eric Voorhees says, uh, a quote, the commission's order, however, fails to identify which crypto assets were investment contracts and provides no explanation for its conclusion. We've seen this before. In sum, Shapeshift is in trouble because the commission, nearly 10 years after the Shapeshift's platform started trading and more than three years after it changed its business model to be a DAO, now contends that some unidentified number of the 79 crypto assets that traded between 2014 and 2021 were investment contracts without explaining why. Notably, the commission does not allege any harm. Shapeshift and its customers have voluntarily transacted and now the order nowhere alleges that Shapeshift defrauded its customers. The standards are so opaque and arbitrary that the commission itself is unwilling to stand by its own analysis. The environment we have created for the crypto asset markets, especially as it relates to secondary trading, is untenable. Cases like this do not protect investors. They intimidate innovators and entrepreneurs. We respectfully dissent. This has notes of Hester Peirce all over it. Okay, so so this wasn't Eric Voorhees saying this. This was Eric Vo- this Voorhees, is, Eric Voorhees a tweeting a quote. Tweeting a quote, yeah. Of a dissent from Hester Peirce about this action. Commissioner Hester Peirce. And who's yeah. the other uh, commissioner? Mark, Mark Yuda. Mark Yuda. Uh, yeah. So did you, by the way, did you read this dissent, the full dissent? Uh, I saw the parts that got circulated on Twitter, which okay. I think you're about to lay up. This was like, uh, so- Are we, are we about to do this? I was Can we going do this? through this story. I was going through this story and I saw this in the middle of Hester Peirce's dissent. She actually wrote a screenplay, David. Okay. Right. And she teased it up. Do, do you want to actually do this screenplay? Okay, who's going to be who? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll be the SEC. You be, uh, you nice. be shapeshift. Okay. Okay, okay, so this is what Hester Peirce wrote. She said, uh, one can imagine the dialogue for that scene in a future episode, the just come in and register episode. So this is a uh, future shapeshift. I'll be the SEC. David, you are be, Gary Gensler. Uh, do your best Gary Gensler. Oh, I'm dude, very I don't forties. have a Gary Gensler. I don't know what. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. Go, go for it. All right. You're first. You're first. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm first. Okay, cut that out. Hello, I'm Eric Voorhees, and I would like to register as a dealer. Um, why? Uh, because I think some of the assets I plan to deal with might be deemed at some point by the SEC to be securities. Oh, which ones? Um, I'm not sure, because I can't really understand which criteria you use to decide whether a token offering is a securities transaction, and if it is, whether the token that was the subject matter of the investment contract remains a security in the secondary market transactions. Um, yeah. Well, if you don't know whether you're dealing in securities, you can't register. And by the way, if some of the assets you're dealing in are securities, you also can't register. Uh, So can you help us think through which of the assets are securities? No. We suggest you read the 2017 Dow report, and it will all be clear to you. You can also look at our enforcement actions if you want. Um, I've read it. I've read about your enforcement actions. I have further questions. Hire a lawyer. Uh, I did, and my lawyers have further questions. Sorry, we can't help any more than we already have. We don't give legal advice here. <laughs> that was Hester versus screenplay. Oh my God! Give her the <laughs> Emmy. Give her the Emmy. Well done, Hester. You actually you met Hester Purse recently, didn't you? Yeah, uh, she was at uh, East Denver. This is David yeah. David Hoffman and Commissioner uh, Hester Purse. She actually on comes the ground, to the conference. boots on the ground, in the trenches with the crypto retail, all the people going, the 20,000 innovators and investors and fanatics that are at the going to, to East Denver. And she was there with us. You know, she has run out of Fs, hasn't she? She's just, she's just like <laughs> right in screenplays now in the dissent. I love that this is published on the SEC website. It's That's SEC.gov. So 
Um, so funny, one, one thing to clarify about this whole shapeshift thing is even though there's a cease and desist out there, it actually can't be shut down because right. now uh, shapeshift does not take custody of anyone. They're not a counterparty, right? right? It's they, basically like yeah. a... A DEX aggregator. They use like ThorChain and that sort of thing. And yeah, if you want to go cross chain, it's basically a front end and uh, obfuscation abstraction layer for ThorChain. And if you're staying in Ethereum, then just DEX, DEX aggregators on Ethereum. And so it's not. It's a now it's now a DAO too, right? It's, I mean, there's no. A, this is like the cool thing is like the, uh, Shapeshift is being sued from the periods of like 2017 to 2021. But not during the periods of when it just turned itself into a DAO, which is interesting. Uh, well, that maybe that court case is coming, David. Who knows yeah. what that'll be? How is how is he going to round up all the DAO participants? Could be interesting. Uh, there's also on SEC news. Um, do you, you know we were talking last week about uh, Kraken versus the SEC, and they revealed mm -hmm. some additional information, yep. and they basically filed for the SEC to drop all charges. Uh, well, apparently, I guess somewhat related to this, but but kind of different. There are now eight U.S. attorney generals, state attorney generals, I should say, from Montana, Arkansas, Iowa, Mississippi, Nebraska, Ohio, South Dakota, and Texas. They have come out with an amicus brief. Okay, and this is like legal speak for basically a legal position criticizing, highly critical of the SEC's uh, stance on crypto. I'm not sure if they directly mention Kraken, but this is some of the, the subtext here. They call what the SEC is doing with respect to crypto a regulatory power grab. And they say that the SEC has appointed itself crypto regulator and further that the SEC puts consumers at risk. These are attorneys general of eight, eight, eight US of states, right? And nice. they are going to a federal agency and just being basically like, you you have no power here. You actually can't do what you're trying to do to the crypto industry. We don't want it. You're actually putting the citizens of our states at risk through your actions. So like, knock it off. Yeah. If you are a citizen of Montana, Arkansas, Iowa, Mississippi, Nebraska, Ohio, South Dakota, or Texas, congrats. Your attorney general is based. Um <laughs> We got an airdrop to talk about, Ryan. Wormhole just announced their token, W. Speaking of base, that is a base uh, ticker <laughs> handle. It's just W? Straight, just, one? just W. Yeah. <laughs> 10 billion tokens. Initially, initial circulating supply of 1.8 billion. 82% of W are being initially locked, and such tokens will unlock over the course of four years. Um, it's an ERC-20 token on Ethereum. Um, what, you should tell them, what, tell them what Wormhole is. Oh, yeah. Wormhole is, don't a, know. is a bridge. It's a bridge. Uh, if the name didn't imply that, yeah, you, you can go and you can token, uh, go across Ethereum, Solana, Arbitrum, Optimism, Base is where the token will be initially be. You can also go across other layer ones as well. 6.17% of the token, so 617 million tokens are being dropped to almost 400,000 wallets. Pretty big airdrop, very hyped up airdrop. Uh, there, you can check eligibility at airdrop.wormhole.com or at Bankless. Uh, no, you can't. Wormhole. No, you can't. Not available yeah. if you're in the U.S., this, oh, we're sorry yeah. to inform you that this site is not available well, in Well, if you're in the region. U.S., use the Bankless Airdrop claim, uh, claimable. No, it'll just uh, bounce you to this. It'll bounce oh, you to this. Shit. All right. Well, we'll get the data <laughs> natively. Uh, when is claiming? Not announced yet. Uh, so we do not know. The snapshot was taken on February 6th, uh, but this token is coming. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see the valuation that this lands at. Uh I mean, it's interesting to see all of the tokens that are being airdropped. Um, StarkNet is coming in at like $20 billion right now. Uh, I mean, we're just getting, the crypto industry is just getting hammered by it's too many, it's five so many to airdrops. $20 billion dollar airdrops. It's we're so just much free money. I'm, of wealth I'm so exhausted by all of this free money. And honestly, <laughs> I sort of am. Like, this is, uh, so uh, I, I will plus one what you were just saying about the Bankless uh, Claimables app because if you want to keep tabs on what's dropping and whether your address is eligible or not, mm -hmm. All you have to do is go to bankless.com slash claimables, type your addresses, not don't type them, copy, paste, whatever, put an ENS in, add your addresses to this tool, and it will for free, this is a public service, it will for free tell you, alert you, send you an email when there is a claimable opportunity. Now, you got to watch out for third-party phishing and scammers mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, but if it's coming from the bankless.com website directly, yeah. then that is an official like claimable that you can go claim. It's a, it's a great way to just keep tabs on all this stuff.
Yeah, I found uh, like two of the most recent optimism airdrop that happened like uh, last week on my wallets, which I would have never have seen that because right? I don't touch those wallets anymore. Well, and then with optimism too, they're just like airdrop airdropping yeah, as they coming. go. Like optimism got this fourth airdrop. It's like seasons, and like you, it's just yeah. impossible to keep up with all of it. All right, what do we got coming up next, David? We're gonna talk about the eigenlayer milestone. We're gonna explain how Michael Saylor actually has infinite money, and also permissionless three, oh. permissionless three. But first, we're gonna talk to some of these fantastic sponsors that, that make this show possible, especially Mantle. The layer two with all of the yield. Stake your ETH with Mantle. Put it on Mantle to get your yield. If you want to, try it out. There's a link in the show notes. Let's go here for Mantle right now. Mantle, formerly known as BitDAO, is the first DAO-led Web3 ecosystem, all built on top of Mantle's first core product, the Mantle Network, a brand new high-performance Ethereum layer two built using the OP stack, but uses Eigenlayer's data availability solution instead of the expensive Ethereum layer one. Not only does this reduce Mantle Network's gas fees by 80%, but it also reduces gas fee volatility, providing a more stable foundation for Mantle's applications. The Mantle Treasury is one of the biggest DAO-owned treasuries, which is seeding an ecosystem of projects from all around the Web3 space for Mantle. Mantle already has sub-communities from around Web3 onboarded, like Game7 for Web3 Gaming, and Bybit for TVL and Liquidity and OnRamps. So if you want to build on the Mantle network, Mantle is offering a grants program that provides milestone-based funding to promising projects that help expand, secure, and decentralize Mantle. If you want to get started working with the first DAO-led layer two ecosystem check out mantle at mantle.xyz and follow them on twitter at zero x mantle Arbitrum is the leading Ethereum scaling solution that is home to hundreds of decentralized applications. Arbitrum's technology allows you to interact with Ethereum at scale with low fees and faster transactions. Arbitrum has the leading DeFi ecosystem, strong infrastructure options, flourishing NFTs, and is quickly becoming the Web3 gaming hub. Explore the ecosystem at portal.arbitrum.io. Are you looking to permissionlessly launch your own Arbitrum Orbit chain? Arbitrum Orbit allows anyone to utilize Arbitrum's secure scaling technology to build your own Orbit Orbit chain, giving you access to interoperable, customizable permissions with dedicated throughput. Whether you are a developer, an enterprise, or a user, Arbitrum Orbit lets you take your project to new heights. All of these technologies leverage the security and decentralization of Ethereum. Experience Web3 development the way it was always meant to be. Secure, fast, cheap, and friction-free. Visit Arbitrum.io and get your journey started in one of the largest Ethereum communities. Celo is the mobile-first, EVM-compatible, carbon-negative blockchain built for the real world. Driving real-world use cases like mobile payments and mobile DeFi, and with Opera Minipay as one of the fastest-growing Web3 wallets, Celo is seeing a meteoric rise with over 300 million transactions and 1.5 million monthly active addresses. And now, Celo is looking to come home to Ethereum as a Layer 2. Optimism, Polygon, Matter Labs, and Arbitrum have all thrown their hats in the ring for the Celo Layer 2 to build upon their stacks. Why the competition? The Celo Layer 2 will bring huge advantages like a decentralized sequencer, off-chain data availability secured by Ethereum validators, and one block finality. What does that all mean for you? With Celo Layer 2, gas fees will stay low and you can even pay for gas natively using ERC20 tokens, sending crypto to phone numbers across wallets using Social Connect. But Celo is a community-governed protocol. This means that Celo needs you to weigh in and make your voice heard. Join the conversation in the Celo forums, follow Celo on Twitter, and visit Celo.org to shape the future of Ethereum. Eigenlayer passes $10 billion, completing the second of my five predictions for 2024, <laughs> off to a great start. Uh, one of those predictions is uh, we're going to burn 1 million ETH, and we are behind on that, but the trend rate, because gas fees are super high right now, is super, super good. Um, that's basically the news. Uh, $10 David, billion David you, have, you have 10 months to hit all your predictions. You don't need to rush it, man. You already got two down. I think you're making uh, I got, great I got progress. I got nine more months. I got nine more months. Yeah, months. you, you got. You're making great progress. I mean, you should be actually, happy with I this. bet you one of them is actually complete. I just haven't bothered to count them. Uh, which is over five billion airdrop to users in 2024. If that hasn't happened by the end of um, it, Q2, probably will. I'll be surprised after yeah. wormhole. It probably will. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so. So this is if you. Oh, and actually, it, one of those. One of my other predictions: ETH layer two meta shifts towards optimized virtual machines. Shout out sponsor Katezi for bringing Linux to the Ethereum layer two <laughs> space. I'm counting that partially checked. <laughs> We'll right. see what happens when uh, both um, uh, uh, Eclipse and Ellipsis and Monad launch. Yep. 
Um, so this is, by the way, translating that $10 billion in Eigenlayer into ETH terms, that's uh, 3 billion ETH. So another over 3, three, 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 billion. Million, 3 million ETH. Three oh, excuse million me. ETH. 3 million ETH. What, what no one has about? 3 billion. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> There's a supply cap, right? Well, congrats on your on your prediction, David. Do you know, do you know you. another general prediction that I didn't make because I didn't make any predictions, but uh, um, I'll claim this as a general bankless prediction, is that wallets are getting a level up. Mm -hmm. this year this cycle okay they're in desperate need i mean it's still really hard to onboard uh, your friends and family this is a post from coinbase talking about uh, the evolution of wallets it includes this really cool demo this is kind of like wallet as a service but look how easy this is in browser wallet you just connect with a um you know passkey on your machine or you could you know use face id on your mm -hmm. phone and basically just have a wallet and this is an account abstraction wallet that uh, Coinbase has built. They built a whole SDK on top of the base chain, which is kind of cool. And I, I had a take um, uh, this week about, oh, this is Jess, Jesse Pollock on this. Um, the Coinbase smart wallet is the most important new product since base and the most consequential consumer wallet launched in the last five years. It's the last piece to bring billions of people on chain because it just works. See for yourself and you can go test this. We'll include a link in the show, show notes. It's super easy to use this, this wallet. And this is like innovation that layer twos can do that Ethereum mainnet is just too slow to do. Like adding account yeah. abstraction type features, right? right? That make wallets totally. super easy. And um, it brings me to kind of this take. I really want to see layer two ecosystems that own the full stack for user experience, the right? Full user experience. Yeah. And so I'm talking own the wallet UX, own the, wa uh, the onboarding, own the fiat to crypto part of it own the economics, make it so that users don't have to think about fees at all, make it feel like Web2, own the apps on top, so launch with some some kind of killer apps, a fully integrated UX, and make it max consumer friendly. And I got to say, I think that's what Base is, is actually trying to uh, to pull off with some of these innovations on the Base chain. Do you have Coinbase Wallet on your phone? I do, yeah. Do you have notifications turned on? No. Okay, you should, because uh, every once in a while, the Coinbase wallet will send you notifications saying, hey, do you want to mint, mint this NFT? And it's usually like a Coinbase NFT. Like the last time I saw this, it was the um, Mint a Penny, and then it was also the Coinbase um, stock earnings. Uh, and I am, anytime Coinbase app shows up, and, and it's always on base, so the fees are like zero. Uh, and so anytime I get prompted by the Coinbase app to go like mint something or do something on base, I go do it. You want to know why? Why? Because base is going to have an airdrop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this. I have zero alpha. I'm completely speculating. I am just shooting from the hip here. But here's how I think this goes. Wait, wait. Sometime, they already have a coin. It's called. It's a publicly traded company. It's coin. You don't think you think they're going to do coin, another coin? Coinbase has an asset. Base doesn't have an asset. And uh. in this world, we like to tokenize stuff. Uh, my idea. So you know. So Circle and Coinbase uh, used to um, have this like partnership, right? Uh, but then they were like, you know, let's, let's just make this simple. Uh, Coinbase is just going to own 25% of Circle, and then we're just going to go off and be our separate companies. And that's, yep. the, that's the alignment there. I think the same thing is going to happen with Base. Um, Base spins out. It's its own separate Base LLC. Uh, CEO Jesse Pollock. Uh, maybe it gets incorporated somewhere else, or or, or like, the, or will it be like? Could it be like the base foundation, basically? Base foundation, yeah. Ba base uh -huh. labs, something like yeah. this. Yeah, and then as soon as it is out from under uh, the large, uh, just gargantuan that is a publicly traded company, base token. Wow, base token. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Not alpha, uh -huh. just uh, D David predictions. There. I'm speculating, yeah. The, anyway, the, the, the alpha is to turn on notifications on your Coinbase wallet and mint whatever they tell you to mint. <laughs> yeah, well, st and start doing things on layer twos in general, yeah, do particularly on, on base, layer yeah. twos that you are uh, bullish on. Um, David, okay, are CryptoPunks back, man? Because uh, there Bro. was a massive sale. Bro. Are you going to say it? You're going to tell me they never left. But uh, it's, it seemed like they left the building for for a while. But this well, is NFTs uh, left the building, and uh, punks had a very respectable floor of forty five ETH at no, the lowest part of the bear market. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. This is this is punk uh, three three thousand one hundred. Yeah, what, that is what? the the alien punk with a headband. This thing sold for sixteen point three million dollars, four point five thousand ether, which wow. is the second highest punk sale. Of all time, sixteen point wow. three million dollars for are, an alien are, punk. Are the celebrities hands. coming back? You know, like uh, Jay Z, no one, Beyonce, I don't know if Taylor people Swift, know gonna... who actually bought this. We don't know who bought it. Some <sighs> an anonymous uh, punk bull. NFTs have not yet had 
a bull market, like a full bull market. There, there's other than, some other than pudgies, yeah. There's some glimmers, right? Like pudgies is kind of a standout, but it's not like last time. Do you think that's coming? Do you think that's still ahead? Uh, I mean, in bull markets, we cycle through absolutely everything at least once. Um, will NFTs have an outsized focus this bull market? I don't necessarily think so. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, maybe maybe it's just punks that are going to catch a bid this cycle. Yeah. Um, David, well, hold on. We just had one sale. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's right. wait. We, we saw the fifty five ETH look, floor. I, I did. The JPEGs are your but thing. Okay. My, my just... take is that punks um, tr uh, track how cool Ethereum is. So, like, if Ethereum is cool, then punks will track the, that via the ETH price. And so, I'm bullish on punks uh, around the ETH ETF approval. Huh. Maybe um, maybe one of the, the the TradFi shops will buy a punk and it become cool with the ETH crowd. Yo, Van Eck boys, let's get this done. <laughs> get your intern on this. <laughs> Michael Saylor bought get your more Bitcoin. Your intern a punk. Your yeah. intern needs a punk. <laughs> oh my god, that would be quite the gift. Uh, d he deserves it though, or she deserves it. He does it. deserve it. He does it. Also, it Franklin is. Templeton twi Instagram accounts or t Twitter accounts. Both of you guys, get your guys people's punks. Uh, Michael Saylor bought some Bitcoin this week, oh, of course. Um, but I'm surprised. Let, let's just zoom out and try to figure out what in the world he's doing. This is this is an interesting uh, tweet that uh, I, I saw this week, and it's kind of like this infinite money glitch. It's not infinite mm -hmm. because it just scales uh, with Bitcoin price, but you know, Bitcoin price is doing pretty well. And we've yeah. always said on Bankless that Michael Saylor's trade purchase of Bitcoin yeah. with his like it's going to micro work, strategy yeah. kind of like equity play is going to work. Well, this is this is actually how this uh, fiat money glitch works. So his playbook is number one, if you're ever curious, he issues a convertible senior note. So he has micro strategy, right? And this is publicly traded company. So he issues a uh, convertible senior notes that's debt denominated in US dollars, a currency that by design is losing value over time. It's true. By design, the mm -hmm. dollar is going to lose money over time. And then he buys the scarce asset in the world, which is Bitcoin. Then he waits for the US dollar to lose value against Bitcoin, leading to a surge in company value, uh, valuation. Okay. And that's just step one. And then that valuation allows him to do what? Issue more convertible senior notes. And then he rinses and repeats. Uh, so as a point of reference, MicroStrategy, the stock has surged by 20% in one day alone, that was uh, March March fourth. It was just twenty percent in that day alone, and year to year to date. So in twenty twenty four, it's already up ninety two percent and uh, four hundred thirty five percent over the past year. He was not drawing in these types of returns with MicroStrategy as like a business intelligence software company. It's all about the Bitcoin treasury, and that's the pit play he's making, and he's made it consistently. And it's almost surprising to me, David, that. Other corporate um, CEOs haven't followed him, but I think part of the reason is they don't have as much governance uh, over their stocks as as Michael Saylor uh, basically does. Because right. you know M Michael Saylor has um, enough voting rights in MicroStrategy to just do whatever he wants, and this is what he wants to do. Uh, this next part of the weekly rollup brought to you by ETH Maximalism. Uh, there's a website on blockchaincenter.net slash en for English slash, slash there is no second best, and it is, what if Michael <laughs> MicroStrategy had bought ETH instead? <laughs> if he had bought ETH instead of Bitcoin, he would have $16 billion dollars instead of the measly $12.2 billion that he has with Bitcoin. And if he had staked that ETH, he would have $17.6 billion. Wow. He'd also have a four, he'd ha have more ETH than Eigenlayer has, David. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have 4.5 million ETH yeah. uh, staked, wow. which would be pretty impressive. We don't, we don't have that kind of, um, like Ethereum doesn't have a no, Michael Saylor level. We just level have 1559. Goal. Yeah. We've got 1559. Just the burn, you know? Just the burn. That's the best quiet we got. burn. Quiet burn in the background. It's easy to forget. It's very powerful. It's not in your face. Um, All right. Permissionless 3 is back. All of our speakers that are so far on board, the 50 of them are announced October 9th through 11th in Salt Lake City, Utah. Balaji, Srinivasan, Luca Nets from Pudgy Penguins, Legion from Variant, Nick White from Celestia, Zachy Manian from Cosmos, Ben Spencer from Framework, Santiago from Parify Capital, Sandy Cool from Franklin Templeton, I could go on, Matt Hogan, I think I will, Muneeb Sariram, Blau, Mike Dudas, uh, Keone Han from Monad. Oh, God. The list of quality speakers is off the charts. Uh, and these are just the people that we've announced so far. Uh, so, Permissionless 3, if you do not have your ticket, 
Get one because it only goes up in price. And if you're a Bankless citizen, you have 30% off with your uh, perks in your perks. Bankless.com slash tool slash perks to get 30% off of your ticket. Me and Mike, uh, we've been working on like some of the, what, what are we going to talk about uh, at Permissionless? And one of the reasons why I think Permissionless is one of the best conferences out there is because we have podcasters who are setting the agenda. Like if you've ever been to like a normie, normal conference, uh, podcasters are not sending the agenda is bad. Uh, we've absolutely killed it with the uh, the list this week. Bitcoin renaissance, AI crypto, restaking are like the three big headlining uh, themes. We also got modularity, gaming, layer twos, and NFTs. Uh, and so there's something for everyone. Uh, it's a festival of crypto content. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, Salt Lake City. We started permissionless in Florida at West Palm Beach. Then we went to Austin. Now we are in Salt Lake. Why? Because we're going west. <laughs> nice. This is this is the only conference I go to, crypto conference, yeah. and it is so yeah. worth it. And uh, how could you miss a crypto conference like this in 2024? Like, mm -hmm. don't miss the bull market, right? Right, it's gonna like, be so this good. This is dude. the year, by the way, David. Um, a uh, big special guest. I'm not. We're not ready to announce right now. Just said yes to mm. uh, coming main stage to yeah, main stage speaker yesterday. Yeah. Really big freaking deal. I'm so excited about it. I think we're going to get some massive names uh, attending this mm -hmm. event and speaking. It's all going to be the crypto content that uh, that you guys love. So go check that out and get a ticket early. Get yeah. a ticket yeah. now. Yeah. Um, David. Up only. Well, speaking of conferences, okay, you just came back from one at ETH Denver. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was I great. realized la last week you were mid ETH Denver, right? You were recording mm -hmm. from Denver when we yep. when we did the roll up. So rather than a meme of the week, um, why don't you just tell me about it? So how was ETH Denver? ETH Denver had uh, outsized focus on side events. I actually only went to the main conference one time uh, during ETH Denver, uh, but um, it was as exciting and ex and like super high vitality as ever. Um, I did a podcast with the Alpha Alpha Boys inside of. Um, uh, ZK Sync's podcast. I don't, I don't want to call it a podcast booth. It was more like a podcast arena. Uh, there was like 60, 70 people in the audience. It was a, the first ever live audience I've ever had. Uh, me and the Alpha Alpha Boys. Really good conversation. Uh, we're going to have that out on the feed. Um, probably the, the Bankless Premium feed sometime this coming week. Um, really, really exciting. Uh, all of these side events, like there was an Eigenlayer side event every single day. I saw Sriram talking like eight different times. Um, there was a Bitcoin renaissance uh, uh, day, which was just huge. Uh, Nick Carter was there. Like a lot of the Bitcoiners were there. Munib from Stacks was there. Um, I hosted a, a modulithic debate between Munib from Stacks, Nick White from Celestia, Neil um, from uh, Eclipse, and then um, uh, this one individual, I'm forgetting the name, from Gita Labs, um, Zani, Zano, I think. Um, really, really good. So yeah, big side event focus. The Bankless Meetup was phenomenal. Uh, had like 200 people at the Bankless Meetup, uh, all drinking beer. Uh, it was really, really great. Really, really great. So David, I, I don't know if you saw this tweet. This is, um, again, I didn't attend ETH Denver, but this was a tweet from what the Uber driver uh, said about ETH Denver. This is Alex, the Uber driver. And... Um, I, I don't know if it's his first exposure to ETH, ETH, the ETH Denver it crowd, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what does he say here? You should read some of this. When I read this, I legit had a tear in my eye. Really? I was like, just it was yes, it was really really because I've been to ETH Denver every single time and I've seen it develop. And crypto from the outside doesn't really have like a great brand. Um, so this is Alex the Uber driver who went to the R Ethereum Reddit page and dropped in a note to the Ethereum community. And so I want to read it out loud to the Ethereum community. Greetings. I'm an Uber driver in Denver. We recently held ETH Denver, a huge conference for our city, and I'd like to share my thoughts as an outsider. A passenger asked about my experience with attendees, and she found it interesting and asked me to share this on this subreddit. Firstly, as an Uber driver, I always deal with one asshole a day. I'm glad to report that I did not have a single bad experience with you nerds over the whole week. <laughs> not a single passive aggressive remark or worse that I would normally get on the daily. Namaste. I probably drove a total of 300 different people from the conference. I'm very chatty and pretty well versed in this space for a seeming outsider. I would say I discovered two types of attendees, career oriented workers and crypto fanatics. Hmm. Career oriented people were interesting, but shared the same skepticism that I do. They consisted of developers hoping for the best because their career rested upon it. Surprisingly, a lot admitted, a lot of them admitted to big personal losses due to gambling behaviors. Yeah, that's yeah, part of crypto. Uh, I found it weirdly refreshing 
to share a somewhat embarrassing experience to a complete stranger as a warning. I got the strong impression that they saw crypto as a career path as opposed to a revolutionary technology. Okay. The mercenary the fanat- crowd. Yeah, they're, they're just workers, like career workers, right? Yeah. They're, here, they're here for the job. Fanatics were more interesting. I expected them to share a cult-like exuberance, which they did. The difference <laughs> is the following, and this is the part that I thought was really cool. I was experiencing a call to action, as with all cults, but instead I only received calls to education. I must have spoken to 200 plus crypto fanatics, but no one told me what they were working on specifically. No company or specific coin or project was shared. No one told me to buy X or invest your time in Y. The only call to action was educate yourself in the space, research your interests, think about a, how a blockchain could change it, join communities, share your values, find projects that align with your beliefs. Are you all degenerates the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama or what? Is is the question, Alex, the Uber driver says. I must admit the philosophy that was shared is refreshing and it seemed that everyone is trying to help me in an indirect way, which I found sweet and non-condescending. I've never judged a group of people as weirdly pacifist and revolutionary at the same time. (laughs) And this gives me an unreasonable level of confidence. After this experience as an outsider, I have come to the conclusion that crypto is an anti-cult and I am in. Wish you all the best, Satoshi. Just kidding. I mean, Alex, the Uber driver. I thought this was so cool because crypto, we have a terrible PR problem to the outside world. But at East Denver, we at least won the hearts and minds of this one individual Uber driver. And I think that that reflects very well on the people that make it throughout a bear market who are here for the right reasons to show up in the right spot and believe in what they do. Uh, The line, um, I've never judged a group of people as weirdly pacifist and revolutionary at the same time. I, that's going to stick with me forever. I really enjoyed this piece. Yeah, that's great. That's, uh, this is definitely he experienced, I think the best of us and the best that Mm -hmm. crypto has to offer. So I'm glad that, uh, our crypto conferences bring that to, to Mm -hmm. people and, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm glad it. I'm, yeah, that that that's powerful for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, you ready to end it here, David? Let's do it. Yep. Next week, all time highs, shall we? Uh, until next then, next week, all time highs. Yeah. It's <laughs> risk a date. disclaimer has got to let you know. Of course, crypto is risky. You could definitely lose what you put in, but we're headed west. This is the frontier. It's not for everyone, but we're glad you're with us on the bankless journey. Thanks a lot. Hello. I would like to register as a dealer. Why? I think some of the assets that I'll end and deal could be deemed securities by the SEC. Which ones? I'm not sure because I can't really understand how you decide if a token offering is a securities transaction. And if it is, if the token that was the subject of the investment contract is still a security in the secondary. Secondary market.